Hello and welcome YouTubers. Today I'd like to share with you some budget drones that I've been tinkering with for the last year and a half, couple years now. Um, I've had all sorts of different experiences with them and I'd like to share them with you. Uh, overall they've been positive, uh, some negative, but uh, I'd like to share with you some handful of these budget drones uh, to see which one maybe is uh, right for you. Uh, I split them up basically in the three levels. We have more professional photography type drones, uh, hobby grade drones, and uh, toy or simple drones. And as you can see, I have uh, black and white here. So uh, let's start off from the top, the sophisticated one. This is the uh, X380C. Uh, you can find these at a good price uh, in either Banggood or Gearbest. Uh, it has a, a two-axis gimbal, high-definition camera. You can put Phantom 3 propellers on it. Uh, very smooth flyer. I've had great experiences with it. Uh, definitely recommend it. Uh, the counterpart, I guess, to it would be the Up Air 1. As you can see, it's white. You can also put Phantom propellers on it. Uh, in this case, I have uh, Autel propellers on it, and uh, it works great. It also has a two-axis gimbal, and uh, these are also, uh, you can find this primarily on uh, Banggood uh, for a good price. And it's also a good flyer with plenty of features. It comes already preloaded with FPV and all that stuff. So, so far I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I've heard there have been issues with previous models of this, like the Up Air Chase and whatnot, but the very latest model, the one that has the integrated camera and gimbal, and that has the uh, unified charger to charge the remote battery and the smart battery inside, this new version, I guess they call it version two, uh, is definitely an upgrade and is very stable and is very good. So I highly recommend that one. Um, going to this side, we have the Hubson H501S. Uh, it has no gimbal, but it does have high definition 1080p uh, camera. It's great for still photographs. If you want to take video, you're going to get shakier video. Uh, I mean, if you try to post stabilize the video and edit it, you probably could pull some decent footage. Uh, but overall, it's a, it's a good overall package. I mean, it comes with FPV, uh, you know, great controller. You can, uh, has follow me. Uh, you know, a lot of features, uh, def definitely recommend this one. This one is just a toy grade um, Sky Viper 2400. You can find these, unlike all the rest here, you can find these in Walmart or Target or Toys R Us for around 80, 85 bucks. And um, they're, they're a decent flyer. It's, it's not the best. The altitude hold on these new versions is not that great. It's a little, it bobs up and down a little bit, but uh, it's a decent little flyer. On this side, we have the Hubson H502S. And yeah, this one in terms of features compared to that one, it's fully loaded. I mean, this has follow me. It also has 720p high definition camera compared to the uh, Sky Viper. And um, it has GPS, which means it has a almost still perfect hover, which you will not achieve on the uh, Sky Viper. And this is a great package. It's a little more expensive than the Sky Viper. Um, it's about, you know, you could probably get them for maybe 130, 140 bucks, maybe on Gearbest. Um, there is a uh, model that's a little less expensive and has has no FPV, uh, no camera where you could, I mean, sorry, no screen on the controller where you could see what the camera sees. It's called the H502E, and that one is still a great quadcopter. It has good battery life and is uh, it's very good to use. And then right here, 
last but not least, we have the uh, Ausenma CG035. And well, this of the bunch is the one I could probably recommend the least, uh, if anything. This one, I just flew it a couple of times and right away it fell onto concrete and it damaged irreparably. <clears throat> and it, I mean, for the little I flew it, it seemed pretty stable and nice, but um, right out of the box, the quality was not that great. The quality definitely wasn't that great. Uh, the plastic is real thin. Any lights that are underneath this you could see right through clearly through the plastic indicating that it's real thin plastic so there's very little tolerance for uh you know for for bashing into things um the quality on um, you know the parts just didn't snap together too smoothly uh you, there's so many separate components you have to charge the fpv screen you have to charge uh i believe the camera as well I mean, there's so many things on this that you, that uh, so many little headaches uh, that you have to be aware of with this that um, definitely I, I don't recommend it. So, and this one's more of a hobby grade because these, this one has brushless motors and so do the rest except the toy gray ones. You see this H502S has uh, brushed motors and this um, Sky Viper 2400 also has brushed motors, as you can see. See, brushed. This is more of a mechanical type motor, but these are, you can tell by all the coils in there that they're, they're brushless motors. And um, yeah, they're more powerful. They have more lift, uh, more takeoff power. They, they have, uh, they can, lift more capacity. You can actually put a small payload underneath some of these. Uh, but on the flip side, they're a little more dangerous. I mean, if you clip your fingers with one of these uh, propellers, you could, you might get a nasty cut, especially these bigger ones. I mean, you can get a nasty cut with these. Um, these smaller toy grade ones that have the brush motors, uh, they're a little safer. I mean, you can probably get nipped on the finger and maybe get a little rash or something but you're not gonna you're not gonna get cut or anything like that so so anyhow um, it all depends on what you want to do I mean if you want to if you're looking into photography and you want to get you know smooth DJI phantom type footage I would definitely recommend one of the bigger ones back there of course they're gonna be a little more expensive uh, you know this one this is a 2k model you can probably get it for about 300 bucks new uh, this is also you know 1080p 2k and you can probably get it you know for maybe it's a little more expensive believe it or not than the up air one you probably get it for maybe 350 closer to 400 um, and uh, and comparing these two it's kind of interesting because uh, this one, believe it or not, is a little more modern, has more integrated things. It has, comes with FPV, like I mentioned earlier. But this one is a little more open-ended. You can add things to it. Um, there's so many different accessories that they sell for it. And so it definitely is a good package. And I think you can even upgrade the battery and put a 7,000 milliamp battery on it and get unbelievable flight time on this. So uh, it's hard to recommend. I mean, if you want a simple, you know, straightforward budget, you know, you want to film DJI type stuff, but you're on a, you know, maybe you're a student and you want to just, you know, not spend thousands of bucks, I'd say the up air, the current up air model is a good bet for you. The current one, not the up air chase, not the one that has the uh, separate camera, but the uh, V2 one. Uh, is stable. I, I was exp I was very shocked at this because I saw a lot of bad reviews. I was expecting this to not be any good, um, but it actually surprised me and it flies very well. It's very stable. I put it through a stress test 
and uh, it performed very well, it didn't fall out of the sky or anything. I haven't had any crashes with it, so uh, the new Up Air one is very good. The X380, very stable flyer, excellent. So I guess if you're, these two are great if you're uh, on a budget for gimbalized, smooth footage. If you're more in the hobby, I would recommend uh, the H501S. Although, if you're looking for a racing drone, if you notice, none of these are racing drones. These are more, uh, you know, more photo uh, photographic, you know, fun, leisure drones. They're not really racing ones. Racing ones are more square, uh, definitely a lot faster. So if you, if in terms of hobby, you're looking for a racing drone, um, the H501S can be fast if you put it in manual mode, but, uh, but it's also a little unstable and tends to drift a lot. But uh, it goes at a decent speed. Uh, if you bought a pair of decent 5.8 gigahertz FPV goggles, you can receive the transmission on this and enjoy some leisure flying with it. But, uh, but it's definitely a good hobby level drone uh, to fly out in the park and all that. And to take, if you're interested in still photos, I would, I'd say the Hubson's good for you because uh, it's less expensive than these other two and takes high definition photographs, very clear. And so if you're looking to take aerial still photographs, this might be a good budget choice for you. If you're looking to take more cinematic video footage, uh, then these two, the Up Air 1 or the X380 might be more for you. And if you're looking for a toy drone, well, this one is unbeatable, the H502S. I mean, it's great for beginners, it has GPS. It's hard for it to get lost because it has return to home and all those features. Uh, so I would say for toy drone, definitely the H502S or E. Uh, for hobby drone, I would say the H502S or H502C. And they're coming out with the H502A. That's going to be great. And uh, for gimbal type uh, ones, I would say either the Up Air one is a good choice or the X380C. Very good as well. And uh, the, I guess the lower of the of the pack that I definitely wouldn't recommend is the Ausenma CG035. Definitely not good quality. Uh, the parts don't click together well. They're low grade. Uh, it, it's not reliable. So I don't recommend that one at all. And then the the um, D2400 Sky Viper. If you have the, if you could dish out a little more, I would get the 502E simply because the altitude hold and the GPS on this is far superior to how this flies. Um, this, the altitude hold on this is not that great. And uh, even though it has no GPS, which is fine because most toy grade quadcopters don't have GPS. Nowadays, almost all the toy grade quadcopters come standard with uh, altitude hold, and the altitude hold on this is not, it's, it's uh, not too reliable, so I think you'd have a funner experience, maybe with a 502E, H502E, and that's like 80 bucks. That's probably even a little less than this. Uh, I don't have a model of that available, but it's almost, it's almost identical to this, except it has touches of red. It has like a red propellers and such. But uh, that's, those are my picks. So um, hope you found this video uh, informative uh, if you're looking for a, you know, a budget quadcopter. So have a good one.